Hello, that was Blanche Neige or Bird You Want, number 5 from Fantasies by Octave Juster. This is the C1 piece of the APRSM Grade 3 Fruit Exam pieces from 2022. Taking a look at the start of the piece, we are in 4 4 time, so we have 4 crotchets in the bar. We have one sharp in the key signature and the, and the constant appearance of D sharps and a few of the music suggests that we are in E minor. We do get other accidentals such as C sharp and A sharp as well, which could mean that we are moved into B minor for some parts of the piece. Let's have a look at the fingerings. Uh, for F sharp, they're the same for both the octaves we are playing. Uh, we have everything on our left hand but the pinky, and on the right hand we have four finger and pinky. Now for the D sharp, we have a different fingering between our low D sharp and the middle D sharp. Having a look at the low D sharp first, we have everything on the right hand, and on the left hand we have everything but the pinky. And for the middle D sharp, we just lift off the first finger of our left hand. Then we have the C sharp, which is just your pinky on your right hand. And then the A sharp, which is on the left hand, thumb and first finger, on the right hand, first finger and pinky. Let's then have a look at the scale for this. Uh, here is the E minor to a 12 as required for your grade 3 scales. If you look at the melodic minor, you also have the C sharp sharpened when you're going up because that's the 6th and also the 7th sharpened, which is your D sharp. They are natural on the way down. And also in the harmonic, you have a natural 6th, so which is the C note, and then you have the sharpened 7th, which is the D sharp. So the melodic first. Uh, and then the harmonic. We have written here the speed is andante at crotchet equals 88. So it could be quite slow if you're counting in crotchets. Uh, we do have some single patient rhythm, but counting in crotchets should be fine. Now when you're practicing and when you're first getting used to the rhythm, you could count in quavers, you just need to double the speed to 176, which is this speed. In terms of structure, this piece is kind of like a nesting doll. It has an ABA form on the outside, and on the inside of the B section, there's another ABA form, which is different to the sections on the outside. The A sections we have is in bar 1 to 7. Then we have the B section in bar 8 to 20 where we have another A, B, A form within two ideas. The first idea is in bar 8 to 11. And then we have the second idea following in bar 12 to bar 16. We have the first idea coming back again with a different ending in bar 17 to 20. At bar 20, we see written DC Alcoda, the capital Alcoda, which means going back to the very beginning until we reach a coda sign, which is a zero with a cross. 
This means we are playing bar 1 to bar 7 again and then when we reach the coda sign at the end of bar 7, we have to skip until the next coda sign which is in bar 21, giving us the ending phrase which is this. <laughs> In section A, there are two ideas. The first one we can see in bar 1 and bar 2. What we have here are two staccato quavers, a tongued crotchet, and then we're going to slur together two semi quavers and a quaver. Starting from bar 2, we're going to get an upbeat quaver before it, and all the subsequent phrases we're going to also have an upbeat quaver. The rhythm structure we have here is going to be used later on, such as in bar 4, bar 12, bar 13, and bar 15. So let's have a look at the rhythm here. We're going to be counting in quavers, you know, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Then we have the second idea, which again is over two bars, and we can see this in bar 3 and bar 4. We have four sets of dotted quaver rhythm in bar 3, and in bar 4 the rhythm is similar to bar 1, swapping out the first two quavers for a dotted quaver rhythm and the crotchet to two straight quavers. We are also crescendoing throughout bar 3 and bar 4 as well. Going over dotted rhythm, it's easy if you count in quavers, uh, so we, we can do again counting in quavers, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and So we're just having our note after we count the and beat and immediately following on with the beat on the 2, 3 and 4. We also need to be careful when we're going back to straight quavers after a set of dotted quaver rhythm such as in bar 4. So again 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and and also uh, get the semi quaver rhythm afterward uh, is also crucial. Then we have bar 5 where we swap to a 2-4 time for one bar. The first beat we are just doing as well what we had previously, uh, a slurred two semi quavers and a quaver, decrescendoing on these three notes as well. On the second beat, we get a quaver rest, and then we need to fit the semi quaver triplet into one quaver. So here is the rhythm we have one and two and one and two and. So we really need to play those three notes fast to fit them in the quaver. So here is the demo for metronome. Then in bar 6, we have the same as in bar 3, and in bar 7, is a simple rhythm with 4 quavers and a crotchet. Uh, again, we are doing a crescendo throughout the 2 bars as we did in bar 3 and bar 4. Do look out for D sharp here, uh, the first time we see it in the piece, and also it is tongued, not staccato as we had the previous staccato quavers. We then come on to the first melodic idea of section B. Now in here we have a syncopated rhythm. So what that means is we have uh, notes coming on to the ambit which we feel it should be accented. So in this case it is the crotchet landing on the and beat instead of on the beat until we resolve it on the note G note in bar 9 and the high E note in bar 11. We do have to be careful of the articulation here. We have slurs, staccatos coming off the slurs, accents and staccatos and also tongue notes. For example in bar 9 is particularly tricky. to distinguish uh, which note is doing what articulation. Uh, do look out for the D sharp in bar 9 and also the C sharp in bar 11. 
Another note in bar 11 is that we are doing a decrescendo from the MF into the P at the end of the bar. Now we're going up the pitch and playing high notes, trying to play high notes quietly is quite difficult. So you do need to be careful and uh, just make sure you just have enough air to push that high E note through without sounding too loud. The second melodic idea in section B it has the same rhythm as what we had in section A, outside of the section B in bar 1 and bar 2. But because the shape of the rhythm is different where we go up and then come down, it's a different melodic shape to what we had in bar 1 and bar 2 where we just come down. We also start off quietly in piano as we had a decrescendo from bar 11. You look out for the A sharps in here as well. In bar 14, we have changed timing to 2 4 again. This time, uh, we are just having straight quaver, so very simple rhythm. Just to look out for the sharps, we have A sharp and D sharp, and also the uh, articulation where we slur the first two quavers and then staccato the last two. We are also doing a crescendo here into bar 15 and 16 where we have essentially the same rhythm as what we had in bar 13 and 14 with an added crotchet at the end and in bar 16 we're also crescendoing towards a forte. The first melodic idea comes back in again uh, just that we are now playing in forte as we had decrescendoed from the second melodic idea and the last bar is different. We have a decrescendo towards the last bar and we also see DC Alcoda which means we need to go back all the way to the start. Before we do that though, we do have a breath mark at the end of bar 20, which means we can take a break before going back to bar 1. Now we are playing with the piano here, so make sure that you do notify the pianist uh, by doing a simple up and down motion before we start playing the A section again. We play the A section as we did the first time, this time to the coda at the end of bar 7 and then jumping straight to uh, bar 21 at the end of the page. So we're going from the B note down to the low E note. And once we get to bar 21, we're doing a decrescendo and look out for that low D note, which has a different low, low D sharp with a different fingering. Now you might need to rotate your flute a little bit towards yourself because you have the low E and the low D which is quite hard to get especially if you've been playing in higher registers that we had before. At the end of bar 21 we also see the red and then in bar 22 a piano so we're slowing down and playing quietly. Look out for the uh, A sharp towards the C uh, from bar 22 onwards and look out for the articulation as well this is very important to distinguish. extend that last note for a bit longer if we need to as well. Well that was the tutorial of the C1 piece Blanche Neige Aubert du Monde by Octave Juste. This piece is quite fun to play with the different rhythms but we do have to get it right especially the syncopation and the dotted rhythms. We also need to look out for in this piece the dynamics as we have quite a range from piano to forte and quite a lot of crescendo and decrescendos inside the piece as well as the different articulations that we need to quite clearly separate out what is staccato, what is tongue, what is accent and what is um, uh, tenuro. Hopefully that was useful to you. I'll be putting up the rest of the pieces soon for grade 3. Check out the A and B pieces I've already done a tutorial on in the playlist for grade 3. Give a like and subscribe if you like what I did here. Put a comment down below if you want me to go over anything specific or if you want to share your own tips and tricks with your fellow viewers. I'll see you in the next video on Master of None. Bye!